Hunter-class frigates undergo a major upgrade with 96 vertical launch units and 16 anti-ship missiles. If the naval gun is removed, the vertical launch units can reach 128, surpassing the Ticonderoga class. As Australia's newest frigate, the construction of the first ship recently began. The Hunter class is undoubtedly a new type of frigate. So why did BAE design an upgraded version? How will the Australian Navy make its choice? The Hunter class frigate, codenamed SEA 5000, is a specialized design by BAE Systems for Australia based on the Type 26 frigate. It is intended to replace the Anzac class frigates. The construction of the first ship is scheduled to commence in 2023. In other words, the Hunter class frigate is a brand new warship in every sense. However, during the 2023 India Pacific International Maritime Expo held in Australia, BAE Systems showcased a new, upgraded version of the Hunter class. In the concept model, the upgraded Hunter class removed the original multi-mission containerized modules and added four sets of 8-cell Mark 41 vertical launch units and two quadruple anti-ship missile launchers. Increasing the Hunter class frigates Mark 41 vertical launch units to 96 and the anti ship missiles to 16. According to BAE, if the Royal Australian Navy chooses to remove the 127mm Mark 45 naval gun, the number of vertical launch units could increase to 128, surpassing the US Navy's Ticonderoga class. However, increasing the number of vertical launch units also means additional weight. The original multi-mission containerized modules of the Hunter class can accommodate 150 tons of equipment. The 8-cell Mark 41 module weighs approximately 15 tons, and the total weight of the 64 cells is about 120 tons. Theoretically, if all 64 vertical launch units were loaded with Tomahawk missiles, the total weight of the Hunter class frigate would increase by approximately 100 tons. This would require some reinforcement in the midship area of the vessel, but according to BAE, the additional weight falls within the ship's safety limits. As for the anti-ship missiles, the replacement of the eight Harpoon missiles weighing 6 tons with 16 NSM missiles weighing 7 tons is not a significant concern. BAE also plans to modify the propulsion and power systems of the Hunter class, which can accommodate the increased weight. Another consideration is the cost. Due to the focus on anti-submarine warfare, the Hunter class is equipped with the Thales 2087 towed array sonar and various anti-submarine warfare systems. However, the upgraded version removes these directly, reducing costs and keeping them within the original budget range. Removing the multi-mission containerized modules also saves some expenses. Based on the current situation, the upgraded Hunter class can move away from its purely anti-submarine warfare focus. Compared to the under-construction Hunter class frigates, its versatility reaches 85%. According to BAE, this might not affect the overall cost and delivery time. However, removing the multi-mission containerized modules and adding the vertical launch system may appear as a direct upgrade, but the usefulness of the containerized modules is still significant. Its removal reduces a certain level of flexibility, especially in medium to low intensity combat capabilities. However, on the other hand, it enhances the ability to deal with high intensity warfare. Apart from these considerations, the upgraded Hunter class also needs to address the issue of weapons. Simply increasing the number of vertical launch units without introducing new capabilities is not very meaningful. Moreover, recent statistics indicate that Australia is facing an ammunition shortage that requires a substantial restocking effort. However, the opportunity to make significant purchases has been missed due to ongoing conflicts such as the Russo-Ukrainian War and the escalation in the Middle East. Countries with financial capabilities have been procuring missiles, such as Japan ordering 400 Tomahawk missiles for $2.35 billion, the Netherlands queuing up for purchases, and the NSM missiles from Norway being in high demand. However, the delivery time for anti-ship missiles is quite long. If Australia wants to make a purchase now, it may have to wait in line for an extended period. 
Regarding funding, Australia is not lacking in resources. On January 25, 2021, the Australian Department of Defence announced the initiation of Project SEA 1300, investing 24 billion Australian dollars, approximately 19 billion US dollars, over the next 20 years to acquire advanced missiles and strengthen the Navy. In Project SEA 1300, Australia plans to introduce air defence missiles, including ESSM, Standard 2 Block 3C, Standard 6 Block 1, and others. To some extent, Australia will not be lacking in missiles, they just need to wait for some time. After all, the Hunter class has a relatively slow service entry. According to the early plans, the construction task was scheduled to take place in late 2022 in southern Australia. However, in 2021, Australia announced an 18-month delay in the construction of the first frigate of the nine-ship Hunter class project due to design issues. Therefore, it was not until 2023 that the construction of the first ship of the Hunter class began. The original plan was to complete the first ship before 2031, but according to estimates, the vessel will not be in service until 2033. Interestingly, Australia plans to make up for the delay when constructing the fourth ship, but it has not disclosed how it will achieve that. It is estimated to be difficult to make up for the lost time, not to mention the redesign required between each batch of three ships. However, it should be noted that the implementation of the upgrade plan has not been confirmed yet. BAE has only provided the Australian Navy with an option. Speaking of which, what kind of ships does Australia actually need? Will they adopt the upgraded version of the Hunter class? I think there is a high probability that the later ships of the Hunter class will adopt the upgraded version. Australia has a long coastline and a wide exclusive economic zone at sea, but its military scale is not large. This determines that the frigates need to be not only large in scale, but also more focused on anti-submarine warfare. Before purchasing the Hunter class frigate, Australia had already introduced three Hobart class destroyers, which were modified from the Spanish Alvaro de Bazan class frigates with the main mission of area air defense. Therefore, the main mission of the Hunter class frigates is anti-submarine warfare. It can be said that the Hunter class is currently the best anti-submarine warfare vessel design in the world. However, some people believe that Australia's future fleet is too focused on underwater threats and lacks offensive capabilities, especially anti-ship and land attack capabilities. The Australian Strategic Policy Institute has even called for reducing the number of Hunter-class orders from 9 to 6. Apart from the Hobart-class destroyers, the remaining vessels should be replaced by multi-mission frigates or destroyers, which means having more missiles. Interestingly, the development of the Australian Navy is also moving in that direction. The Australian Navy is transitioning from a defensive orientation to an offensive orientation, so it needs a more powerful surface combat fleet. This also means that the future Australian Navy no longer needs to focus heavily on building anti-submarine surface vessels, as this task will be taken over by nuclear submarines. As a result, the Hunter-class frigate no longer meets the requirements of the Australian Navy. That's why at this year's India-Pacific International Maritime Expo, countries such as the UK, US, Germany, France, and Japan showcased new designs for main surface combat vessels. BAE removed the multi-mission containerized modules from the Hunter class and equipped it with 64 vertical launch cells while also removing the anti-submarine warfare system. This is to prevent losing opportunities within the Australian Navy. Of course, I believe the Australian Navy will not simply reject the Hunter-class frigate. Its performance is still impressive. The Hunter-class frigates, derived from Type 26, are also expected to be of high quality. The Hunter-class has a total length of 151.4 meters, a width of 20.8 meters, a standard displacement of 8,200 tons, and a full load displacement of 9,800 tons. It can achieve a maximum speed exceeding 27 knots and has a range of 7,000 nautical miles. The radar system utilizes the domestically produced CEA FAR-23 band fixed array phased array radar, while the combat system adopts the US Aegis system. Lockheed Martin is responsible for integrating various weapons and equipment on the ship with the Aegis system. 
According to the procurement agreement, the Royal Australian Navy will order 9 Hunter-class frigates, with a total investment cost of approximately $30 billion. This includes investments in shipyards and other supporting facilities. The key point is that the construction of the Hunter-class benefits both the UK and Australia. The hulls of the Hunter-class frigates will be built by the Osborne Naval Shipyard in Australia, with steel provided by Bluescope Steel. The domestic content of the Hunter class is expected to reach around 65% to 70%, providing many job opportunities in Australia. Numerous Australian defense industry companies will also benefit from this business. And even if there is a change in strategic direction, it would only require a change in the weapon configuration. The versatility of the Type 26 frigate is not just for show. It can be modified without increasing costs or changing delivery times. However, it is a bit difficult to understand the idea of removing the Mark 45 naval gun on the Hunter class. In practice, missiles can never completely replace naval guns. I don't deny that anti-ship missiles are becoming more powerful with high speed and destructive power. However, they are also expensive. When dealing with low value targets, missiles are not cost effective. Anti-ship missiles like the Harpoon are about 1,000 times more expensive than large-caliber, non-guided shells. Moreover, in many situations, naval guns are sufficient to engage maritime targets. Compared to the limited number of anti-ship missiles a warship can carry, the amount of ammunition for naval guns is much greater. If a destroyer uses vertical launch systems and carries one additional cruise missile, it will correspondingly reduce the number of air defense missiles it can carry. In other words, by using naval guns against low-value targets, warships can retain a limited number of cruise missiles to engage high-value targets at longer ranges. Furthermore, naval guns with a large ammunition capacity are effective in maintaining a significant firepower advantage in landing zones and can provide long-term support for naval landing forces. In the current environment, with unmanned drones and vessels prevalent at sea, it is even more unlikely to remove naval guns. In the Red Sea region, the USS Kearney used its Mark 45 naval gun to destroy drones launched by the Houthis. In conclusion, considering the strategic direction of the Australian Navy, the upgraded version of the Hunter-class frigate is likely to succeed. In 2024, Australia will reassess its surface fleet and determine its configuration. By then, we will have a clearer picture of the fate of the Hunter-class. Let's wait and see. That concludes this video. What do you think? Do you believe the Australian Navy will adopt the upgraded version of the Hunter-class? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. Let's discuss it together.